Hello again everyone and welcome back to this series on iconic structures of the world. The one I'm going to draw today for you is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Uh, a sphinx of course is in the shape of a reclining lion and it usually has the head of a pharaoh. In this case this is uh, the one of King Khafre who lived four and a half thousand years ago. Uh, so this sphinx has his image. So I'm going to sketch in the shape of the head. Now the head itself has been battered over the centuries, you know, and I think he lost his nose. <laughs> so basically we're going to draw the shape of the head first of all like this, with the chin shape going up, and the eye comes in about here. Let's try this very typically sloping Egyptian type eye there, and uh, the ear, and the headdress is still visible comes in about there with the central part and of course uh, sculpted like this with that shape at the back and the shape come down here the mouth appears in there okay and the nose as I said it's kind of uh, gone <laughs> okay so uh, that's the shape of the pharaoh and uh, after that you get the shape of the recumbent lion now, again, over the centuries, the limestone has been beaten by the wind, and I think uh, not a few people, not many people have actually come and taken bits of it away, so the outside shape of it is all kind of uh, wiggly like this. You know, there's the front coming across, you can see the lines that, uh, or the, the limestone, the way it was built and so on, uh, coming down to well, first of all, there's the roughly front there. Come down to the front paws, which are very large and quite long. They come out, stretching out in front of the sphinx like that. One there, another one coming in there like that. Maybe division there, coming back, and then going back up like that. So there's a kind of rough shape there, okay? And uh, the back of the swing, it comes down, and behind it, there's a tail, which you can see quite clearly coming around here. But as it goes up, I think uh, the stone has, has weathered, has gone, disappeared. All right? Uh, and this side here, there are two structures, one shaped, both kind of box-like, one like that, and the wall, and another one coming around about here, which comes in behind this kind of elbow shape. Like that with the wall kind of shape sticking up there. And uh, the, the bottom part of the Sphinx comes in just about there. So there we have roughly the shape of the Great Sphinx of Giza. Now all these lines coming across here are the lines of the stones. That's how it was constructed. And you can see these fairly clearly now because of the way that the, the surface has been, or limestone surface has been de degraded over the years. Okay. Right, and the, you can actually see the, the way that these have been constructed with lines of limestone block coming over, which I just put in, I won't put them all in obviously, it's take a long time, I just put a few in to suggest where they are, and they kind of curve around there as well, and they've got the front paws and so on. Okay, so uh, I'll now get the pen and make an ink in. Okay, we'll start with the head shape, it comes up like that, and again use kind of wiggly lines and gives the uh, the feeling of the stone being weathered. Look at that, and then come down at a more sharp angle. And as it goes up, it goes behind the ear. The ear shape comes in about here. Like that. And carries up to there. And you do have lines coming down. Again, don't make them solid, you can get more artistic sense by breaking them up, like that. 
and also you see some of the lines coming off this side as well like that right the top of the head lower um, with the shape of the headdress coming in but there and there's a kind of central part that comes up there like that and again we're seeing the, almost the construction with bits of the, the limestone showing there and the eye is in like that slopes down the way slightly there's a bit of the eye like that see and then as I said the nose is gone but there's a very fine kind of line of a ridge coming across there and you see the part of the other eye coming in there and the cheekbone comes out and comes back around again and that's quite a strong jawline Just up like that and the mouth don't do a line right across it leave it and then make it appear again there and the bottom part of the mouth there and I'll actually take um, a smaller pen now and put in some of these lines that go around the face there like that a little bit of the top lip there come in right and I'll put some lines coming across here smaller lines which you can still see ridges of limestone it comes down like that go back to the thicker pen now okay down to there right along the back now you can see break up these lines a bit and they come down and you'll start to see the the rows of limestone blocks coming out of the shapes of them appearing like that and the tail coming down from the back and going up and kind of disappearing into the stone there and then we have these two structures at the bottom here like that and we've got stone rock coming in here And this one, a small kind of wall appears there. A couple of marks for the, the limestone blocks. And come around. And going behind there. Right, now we can draw the, the shape of the legs, front legs coming in and like that and sloping down and straight down carving around, there's a division here, you get another bit of the paw coming in there straight back down to there and the other one, there's actually another structure that comes in just about here. A block of limestone, and then carry on with the other pole coming in there. And that's divided too, you got another one coming in, coming in around there. And the other side of that pole comes along and then there's a kind of joining part that goes in like that. Okay, now let's move up the front. 
put in these lines where the blocks appear. Up along the shoulder, up to there. And more coming in here now. And kind of these lines along like that. Gives a good idea of the construction, as I said. And that comes around the side. And you've all these kind of broken lines coming along like that. And as I said, break up your lines, don't draw solid lines. Like that, another big lump coming in over there. And more coming in there. And you can actually see again some of the limestone blocks, the way they've been built, coming in there like that. And a few more coming in there. Okay, now I'm going to move back to the smaller pen now. And I'm going to put in some more detail and there's some more kind of brickwork if you like coming in along here and along the front of the sinks and as I said lots of little limestone blocks made up to, to create the, the paws the legs I'm not going to put them all in, you don't have to, all you have to do is suggest some of them and yet I will do the rest. Start to come around the way by the way, okay, like that. And here too, I'll come around right there. And here. It's also good for showing the shape. And a few more in there. And here. Okay, all right, uh, now a wee bit more texture I think on some of these lines here, just to let you see how they look, you know, you get the sense that they're rounded there like that, and that's what you get if you look at the actual sphinx itself. You see there's that, that kind of rough look to it. Like that. Okay. Right, let's see now. Yeah, bring that out over there, bring it back in again. And I think what I'll do is take my pencil now, do a bit of shading because you get strong sunlight coming in. There's great shadows, for instance, under here, a very deep shadow, which kind of goes down the neck there, like that. And of course, around this side of the face, you'll get the shading in right up to under the cheekbones here, right up to there. And we'll take it right down to right there, like that. And then in here, of course. And you get a bit of light catching the top here, so your shading may be going up there, something like that. Okay. And you can use your pencil to put in a few more marks, you know, to get the impression of the lighter bits of, of shading happening. Like that. And of course, as you come around the side, this gets that. Uh, a bit darker 
and you can shoot in the bits that you've drawn here. And you're very good at shading on these things coming across. Shading behind the elbow shape here. Like that, leave a shading in here as well. And also in here. Then that side. You know, we can imagine the light coming strongly in from this side. So what you want is to see two lines close together like that. You get a nice sketchy look to it. Okay? Like that. It's not all shaded because, of course, the way the light is spread about, you'll get reflections on the surface, so it won't all be one solid dark colour. Okay. Okay, well, that's looking rather nice now. Of course, you can go on. If you look at a picture of the Sphinx yourself, you can see where the light and shade is. But uh, that gives you a nice idea of the way the, the Sphinx would look in, in bright sunlight. Okay, so anyway, I hope you enjoy that. And I hope you can join me next time. I'll be drawing another iconic structure for you. <laughs> okay, in the meantime, of course, all the best and happy drawing.